Oh, this stupid music. It's Keelan music. It's brilliant. Hello? Where am I going to use this? Um... <laughs> Just put it in the middle. Somewhere. <laughs> 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 It'd be nice. People will love it. I'd be like, oh, that's a nice bit of music. Oh, this is lovely. It's like a proper radio show. Because <laughs> proper radio shows play <laughs> really poor quality midis. MIDI soundtracks from a website from the 1980s <laughs> that you discovered when you were looking for pictures of naked Vanessa Hudgens. <laughs> Vanessa Hudgens. Why do you say her name so oddly? How are you supposed to say it? I thought it was like Vanessa Huygens or something. Or Hyde. Hi I thought the D what? was silent. Huygens? What, like yeah. the belt? The Huygen belt in space. Space? In space! Why are you mocking me? You're the one who can't Mate. pronounce Hudgens. Hudgens? Hudgens. I do say Hudgens! Hudgens. Hudgens. You say it like that, you say <laughs> Hudgens. I don't, you fuck. And say back it again. to our what? recording. No, we're gonna go back to the podcast now. Say it again. Say no! It again. Vanessa Hudgens. <laughs> Why do you do that? What, what do you mean? Do that's that? how I say it. What's wrong with that? You're like worse than me when I, you know, say sausage <laughs> or raspberry. Hello and welcome to TTT. Simon, oh, how are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you, Lewis. Um, I've been reading the SCP wiki. It's like a series of weird artifacts that have been discovered and are being kept secure and away from the public. It's not real. By who? It's not. It's not real. By an organisation. It's like a conspiracy theory. No. It's fiction. Fictional stories that people make oh. up and they put it on the wiki. This comes from um, the Creepy Pasta series of stories. Creepy Pasta? Yes, Creepy Pasta. Pasta. Creepy Pasta. Was in spaghetti. Is in the sort of small pieces of chewy white spaghetti. Look, pasta can come in many forms. There's the ones that are like little tubes. Penne. The ones that look like bow ties. Um. Bowie. The ones that are like spirals. Fusilli. The ones that are just sheets. Sheety. Sheetini. <laughs> Sheetini pasta. Ravioli. You can't forget ravioli. I'd like some Sheetini pasta, please. <laughs> With some shiitake mushrooms. It's a creepy pasta. They're, they're pretty good. Well, some of them are pretty good stories. They're like ghost story kind of things. About weird events or odd things that you can recreate. You know, if you go to this abandoned warehouse at this time and you perform this task, something weird opens. So is this one it's like kind of... if you go to Luigi's Pasta Restaurant and order the double ravioli <laughs> with cheese, Chitini. Chitini, you're gonna get um, a zombie uh, coming out of your pasta. And attacking you. Or ghost. Exactly. Exactly. It's kind of it's kind of similar to well, it's inspired by Silent Hill in some places. Where you know, there are dark, horrible things then you can cross over to this, this darker world. So tell me about this haunted pasta. The haunted pasta. It contains the souls of little baby pastas that were caught in the wild, culled, executed, slayed and slaughtered, and made into the delicious pasta that we enjoy today. So are you suggesting that pasta is made from tiny little fusilli shaped animals? Yes, yes. They, they make little mewing sounds 
like newborn kittens. Oh gosh, that's terrible. Yeah, but it's worth it because it's just so delicious. The haunted pair of glasses. Anyone who wears them turns into a zombie. It is kind of like that, essentially, yeah. But I mean, a lot of them are mechanical devices that may have come from the past, may have come from the future, maybe from like a different dimension. Some of them look like ordinary household objects. You should you should browse this because it is just fucking weird as hell. Oh, there's um there's a coffee machine. It's like a weird magical coffee machine. This is a good one. Um, you have to put fifty cents into it. And you enter the name of any liquid using a touchpad, and it delivers 12 ounces of whatever you've asked for. And th <laughs> there's like a great example of something that happened. There were two agents that were testing out, you know, asking it for various liquids. And one of the agents is called um, Joseph, and the other agent asks for a cup of joe which is slang for coffee. So he says, can I have a cough of Joe? And then Agent Joseph begins to sweat, complains of dizziness, and then he collapses. And they find this horrible fleshy mixture in the cup. And there is 12 ounces of flesh that, when it's DNA tested, belongs to Agent Joseph. Dun dun dun! How would that work? It's not real. Do you understand this? It's not it's not real. Someone asks for a cup of anti water. The machine hums and displays a message that says out of range. What does that mean? They theorize that um it couldn't get any antimatter from like another dimension or whatever. A researcher keyed in a request for the best drink I've ever had, and it, a fluid that was dis, a, a fluid was dispensed that was similar in appearance to cola. The researcher drinks it, and he recognises it from something he had during his bachelor party years ago. And at the time, he said, that, "Oh, this is the best drink I've ever had," and he didn't know what was in it, other than it used like cola as a mixer. And it had rum and so how some does other that teleport it that he wasn't sure. from where? If it's like a unique mix of stupid stuff, where was that originally? Does it blend it itself like a cocktail? Does it like extract a little bit from all sorts of other places? Yeah, it must teleport from somewhere, some rum, some cola, some of the other spirits that are involved. I think this is really interesting. That coffee machine is really, really interesting, isn't it? You could imagine there these these please being good plots for for stuff for short stories or you know sci-fi and stuff. There's loads of these little tests that they run on it. It's amazing. Like there's a test in which someone keys in the perfect drink, dispenses a cup containing an odorless lavender liquid. The subject drinks the liquid and he appears to go into like shock, and he later kills himself leaving behind a note that says, I'm sorry, but at this point, everything's just one big letdown. <laughs> <laughs> Can you... Isn't that brilliant? Someone asks for a pan-galactic gargle blaster. Oh, yeah. From the Hitchhiker's Guide. The machine dispenses a fluid, dark yellowish-green in colour, which ever vest and appeared to give off a vapour similar to... That observed in the sublimation of dry ice. Subject drank what he called a single minuscule sip of the fluid. He later reported the taste as being somewhere between a gin and tonic, a margarita, a glass of scotch whiskey. Oh, and that's it. And then it ends there. It doesn't actually complete the line. That's God obviously for someone else to fill Upon in. Upon swallowing... Fill it in. It's a wiki. What else shall we fill in there? No, no... I'm saying it'd be stupid to edit it when it's left out in order to be, you know, somewhat, you know, slightly subtle about it. I mean, it wouldn't be a very good, I mean, technically, and saying, oh, it, it tasted a bit like a fucking gold brick hitting me on the edge. 
You know, that doesn't really work, does was it? Was the person from Yorkshire... Was Douglas Adams from Yorkshire? <laughs> By the way, I think he must have been. Because must have I'd been love to hear the Hitchhiker's Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy read out in with a Yorkshire accent. Fucking gold brick it and be on the head. I should do that one day. He had a hangover that lasted 18 hours after drinking one sip of the Pangalactic Gargle Blaster. It's not actually Gargle Blaster, it's, it's like blackened out. They often black out a lot of the uh, information. Like people's names and such. Why? It's classified information, isn't it? You can't go around saying names. You can he do that? You can he? I'm not fucking Scottish. <laughs> uh, right, let's get another one. Get another you one. Know what we, would be good? It would be good if the fans of the Yogpod gave us their own little SCPs, their own little weird items. Mm, that they good idea. Of. Um, yeah, a lot of them are, like, standalone stories. Some of them are, like, part of a, a sequence, a collection. On your 33rd birthday, go to your local gas station and pick up the newspaper. The classified ads will have a small segment commemorating your birth and asking you to turn around. Dun-dun-dun. Upon looking behind you, dun-dun-dun, a man dressed in a bat. Uh, dressed in a black cloak, will be advancing in your direction. If you choose to run away, he will hunt you for the rest of your life, eventually killing you. However, if you await his arrival and show no intent of fleeing, he will give you a small package. Inside, you shall find the object you most desire. Right, okay. (laughs) So you can either run away and he'll hunt you down and kill you, or you can just wait there and he'll give you a present for your birthday. There you go. Is it, these are the kind of things left on YouTube comments, aren't they? Like chain you know? email things. I guess so. Yeah. I mean, some of them are. I mean, a lot of them are very different from these. I mean, these are kind of like rituals, they're known as. You have to do, you know, certain things and something will happen, blah, blah, blah. A young couple have just been married at a large family wedding. The reception is held at the bride's grandmother's house. After they have had dinner and cake and such, they all decide to play hide and seek. Not that likely a story, which has been a tradition in the bride's family for quite some time. Okay, yeah, I can believe that. Okay, the bride, knowing the house, decides to hide in the attic in a large chest. But when she climbs in, she slips, and the lid comes crashing down. It knocks her out, and she's now locked, unconscious, in the chest. Right. Meanwhile, not, not so believable, the rest of... but possible. Very, <laughs> just, just about possible. Okay, just, just about believable. Yeah. Meanwhile, the rest of the family is searching for her, and they're starting to get worried. Okay, how long After have they been searching? Hours searching? of calling. F- hours, right, okay. Hours. After hours of calling for her and searching the house, they call the police, who are also unable to find the missing bride. The bride so eventually like wakes sort of, up. This is like the game. This is like some badly orchestrated horror film. Yes. The bride eventually wakes up, but is unable to get out of the chest, so she starves to death. What do you mean she starves dun, dun, to death? Dun. Do you know how long it takes to starve she starves to death? She Well, she lost a lot of weight before the wedding. No. So, you know, she was a bit no. skinny. No, you don't starve to death. You die of thirst before you... She... You, you, you die of thirst before you starve to death. No, she was able to... She she took a bottle of water She was her. able to lick the condensation so from the inside of the box. <laughs> right. So, yeah, so, do you exactly. Know, okay, do you know it. how long it takes to starve to death if you've got... <laughs> access to water. You know it's not real. It takes like you seven days. This is real. Okay. So she was in that box for seven days, right? Approximately. With a husband. She was only in a house. They would have torn the house apart. They would have pulled the house apart looking for her. They would have torn down every single wall. Everywhere. Hello? Hello? Does anyone hear me? Hello? I could really use a sandwich. <laughs> Been in here for seven days. 
Uh, I'm fucking famished. Come on. A little bit of pizza. Some scrambled eggs. A bit of toast. Oh, come on. It takes a long time. To... Sorry, I know I treat these things with a bit of realism, but I can't help it. I... It's my duty yeah. to question. Because you're a jerk. It's... No, it's because I'm a scientist. <laughs> it's because you're a jerk. You're not a real scientist, though, are you? Of course I am. I've got a degree in actually... chemistry. I'm a master of chemistry. It's been four years at university okay. studying chemistry. So when was the last the two time years for a drug you company. touched a test tube? When did you last touch a test tube? What do you mean, when did I last touch a test tube? Mr. <laughs> fucking Scientist. Is that the qualifications when now did you for last... being a scientist? Yeah. If you ask any Nobel yeah. Prize winner <laughs> when the last time he touched a test tube was, I'd, I'd be surprised if he told you that they did they use test tubes anymore. I haven't been using them for about 30 years. Oh, it was, it was last week, Simon. It's funny you should ask that. That's how I managed to discover the cure for cancer. I had it in this little test tube all along. No one uses <laughs> test tubes anymore. They're so <laughs> stupid. They're just a waste of time. Uh, anyway, this isn't the end of the story, right? The bride Damn. is in this chest. She eventually starves to death. Okay, right, right yeah. And the next people move in, do they? To the house? No, Several no, no, no. Later. No, no. This so everyone's no, given up the search, no. obviously. No, years later, the bride's younger sister gets married. Dun, dun, dun. Right? And they go through the same thing. The reception's at the bride's grandmother's house. They have dinner and cake. And they decide to follow the tradition, even though her sister just disappeared the last time they played. They thought, this went okay last time. I'll do it again. (laughs) (laughs) There was no tragic event last time. Well, maybe they just forgot. I don't know. I can see the logic there. Um, they wouldn't want to bring back bad <laughs> memories or anything. No, it's still exactly the same. It's a tradition. I'm sure the groom must love it. You know, he's like, oh yeah, this is a great it's tradition. It's the same guy. Yeah. It's the same guy. Is he marrying the sister now? Yeah, probably. Okay, so it's the same guy. I can see why he'd be happy with this. But yeah, her I can sister... see why he'd like to do this. Guess where her sister decides to oh, go and hide. Oh, I don't know. Is it the box in the attic that nobody knows about? <laughs> Yeah, the chest in the attic in which they didn't decide to look in to try and find where her sister might be. So she picks the same chest, she opens it, even though it was locked, and inside she finds, Nothing. much to Nothing. her horror, her sister's rotted remains still wearing the wedding dress. Dun, dun, dun. But now the wedding dress is covered in blood. From her frantically trying to claw her way out of the dun, chest. Dun, dun. And then she slips, bangs her head, <laughs> falls into the chest, <laughs> and the chest falls and locks shut. Dun, dun, dun. Excellent. Well, I mean, this is really worthwhile, isn't but, it? But, I mean, some of these stories are pretty good. I mean, that is funny, isn't it? It's a funny little story because it is kind of so ridiculous. It's stupid. If you bathe naked... A whole night under the light of the full moon, you'll be able to attain a three hour erection the following day. <sighs> right, that is definitely read directly from YouTube. <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty piss poor. If you link three articles on YouTube uh, to your profile in two hours, you'll meet the love of your life and you'll, you'll be happy forever. Your, your crush. We'll kiss you. But if you don't, you'll die tomorrow. <laughs> dun dun dun. Precisely. In Berlin, after World War Two, money was short, supplies were tight, and it seemed like everyone was hungry. At the time, people were telling the tale of a young woman who saw a blind man picking his way through a, crow- a crowd. The two started to talk. The man asked her for a favour. Could she deliver the letter to the address on the envelope? Well, it was on her way home, so she agreed. She started out to deliver the message when she turned around to see if there was anything else the blind man needed. But she spotted him hurrying through the crowd without his smoked glasses or white cane. She went to the police, who raided the address on the envelope where they found heaps of human flesh for sale. And what was in the envelope? What do you mean for sale? What do you mean for sale? What 
because people are hungry. Say? There's no food. There's no did money. It have, did it have those? It says. Did it have like little wooded sides in it, like fifty pence yeah. per pound or whatever? <laughs> like you get in Sainsbury's. Was there like a special offer? Human art on art. <laughs> Arse, buy two, get one free. One little bit of the story. Inside of the envelope, there's a message, and it says, This is the last one I am sending you today. <gasps> you see? Because she, she was delivering it, and she was going to be made into a, into a heap of human flesh. I guess she already is. Delicious. Mm. Very nice with creepy pasta. <laughs> <laughs> Do you reckon there's like a gourmet restaurant like nearby? You know, because wherever you find these speciality meat shops, there's always like a, a restaurant that uses it nearby. You know, to like get cheap meat and stuff. Like halal meat. Do you reckon there's like a? Yeah. Oh, scary stories, Lewis. Are you going to be able to sleep tonight? Me. <laughs> <laughs> It's like the horror special. Yeah, this is our Halloween special. It's quite a way, you know, quite a while away, but the phone rings. Hello? Yes, hello. May I have a few moments of your time? Sure, I guess. The phone clicks. You feel a little older. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty weird. <laughs> oh my god. Your court Halloween special. <laughs> this is ridiculous. This one is just ridiculous. An unpopular young med student had been particularly annoying one day, and some of her classmates decided to play a trick on her. They snuck into her room after she'd gone to bed and placed an amputated arm into bed with her. The next morning, they waited anxiously for her reaction, but they got none. Eventually, they went up to check on her, and they found her sitting on the bed moaning and gurgling as she gnawed on the arm. <laughs> <laughs> what noise was she making? Gnawed <laughs> on the arm. <laughs> That's brilliant. It's a lovely story, That's brilliant. isn't it? It's heartwarming. I would say so. Oh, yeah, I would say if so. If we do a Halloween special, you've got to have some really stupid fucking sound effects. Okay. Of, like laughter and light. Well, not lightning, but <laughs> uh, thunder. <laughs> wow. Like wow. Did you like that? No. No, I didn't. Why not? Horrible. What's wrong with it? Jesus Christ. I just. A little bit of. A little bit of wee just came out of my willy. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, don't do it again! <laughs> oh man, mean? I have to staple it shut. What the fuck? Don't do that! Peeing all over the place. In 1962, A the crack popular crayon military man force. <laughs> <laughs> what captured did it by in the US government? Did it in din. They were placed in a max din din. security prison, but they escaped. Did it in din. You can find them. Din din. Then maybe did you can recruit. <laughs> The A-Team! So we'll, we'll never find out what happened in 1962. Oh, sorry, in 1962. You've ruined it. No, you've ruined it. You've ruined it by doing the A-Team. <laughs> <laughs> Which is pretty terrifying. In 1962... Now I'm doing it like the the fucking guy who does the voiceover at the start Do it of the like team. The X Files. Okay. 
in 1962, the popular... It's worth it. Okay, it's worth getting to the end of this. I'm glad one of us okay. thinks so. In 1962, the popular... In 1962. Oh, Just sake. say it all with your tongue hanging out. In 1962, the popular crayon manufacturer... You sound like you've got a cock in your mouth. <laughs> ...that a, a, a very large, <laughs> thick girth of a tongue hanging out of my mouth. This is ridiculous. Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? <laughs> Why am I talking? Read the story. My fucking read the story. Tongue. Hang on, read out the my story. Mouth. It's a creepy way to. Oh, just read the story. In 1962, the popular crayon manufacturer, Crayola, was forced to change the name of its flesh colour to peach. Many people believe this was a response to civil rights movement. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Who's that? The Cyril Rights Movement. So, what the fuck is the Cyril Ro- the Cyril Rights Movement? It's a chap called. He was, he's a big fella in Yorkshire. Fuck I think he was me. the mayor. The mayor. <laughs> Cyril Rights. Oh Jesus! Hello there, mayor Cyril. Hey up, lad. So can you hazard a guess why Crayola would have changed the name of a crayon from flesh to peach? <laughs> Try and guess the end of the story. Alright, well I reckon if children... Creepy children were using the flesh-coloured crayon to draw things... No child they has grew, ever they spoken like that. Oh God! <laughs> That's an old lady! <laughs> That's an old lady! That's not a child's voice. That is a creepy old lady. Hello! What the hell are you doing? I'm a, ch- I'm a little child! Oh fuck! Is that better? Oh God, that's horrible! Hello. I don't know what the opposite of an erection is, but I currently have it. Right. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Have you seen a small What the hell is that? To draw with. That's horrible. Oh my and god. That's horrible. I drew a picture of no. a kitten. And it came alive. I'm sorry? And killed me. How, how did that happen? How does that happen? How does a kitten come alive from a picture? I don't know. I don't know. So, what? Is that, that, is that not true? You. Is that not true? That the kitten um, came to life? That the flesh-coloured crayons were somehow... Um... No. 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 The reality of the situation, the reason that Crayola changed the name of flesh-coloured crayons to Peach is that they were running out of skin donors. <laughs> I, I went a little bit cross-eyed when I said that. I don't quite know why. <laughs> I made a weird face. <laughs> For no reason. Skin donors. Skin donors. <laughs> 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 weird face. <laughs> For the radio. Yeah, that's brilliant. Nice work there. <laughs> a uh. bit cross-eyed. Oh my god. I could just imagine you just seeing... <laughs> 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 it's not a nice mental image, is it? Oh, God. What are we doing? Cross-eyed and I'm patting my belly. <laughs> it's a terrifying image. Uh, with my tongue hanging out my mouth as I'm trying to speak. Hello, Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Don't do that. Don't use that voice. It's horrible. <laughs> so, do an introduction to the um, Halloween yog pod. Welcome to the Halloween yog pod. Hello. Brilliant. Ah, uh, help me. I'm trapped. You're trapped in a chest in an attic. Yeah, I think what happened was, after the woman, um, mm. the second mm. woman got trapped in the mm-hmm. attic, mm. Mm. her daughter... <laughs> was going to get married. <laughs> and they went to the... Uh, I mean, they could have run out of room the... in that fucking chest <laughs> after a few decades, aren't they? Well, no, but obviously they're just going to keep compacting people down in there. Ah, oh, It's like all this squishy, dried, desiccated flesh. Dusty old bone. bones. It's weird, isn't it, that the, the word desiccated is only ever used in the context of flesh or coconut. 
Oh no. Oh, this is a really bad one. Based on an, an urban legend. It was the day before a couple's wedding. Oh, the bride not again. Wanted... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you ever get married, basically that's it. That's the oh, end. You're fucked. It was the night before a couple's wedding. Oh, anyway, God. it was... <laughs> Eek. You kind of sound like Brian Blessed in the Star Wars movie he was in. It's like the king of the fish people. The year was 2009. The date was tonight. Dun dun dun. Oh my god. Go on. It was the day before a couple's wedding. The bride-to-be wanted to look beautiful in her white wedding dress. So she went to a local salon to get a healthy-looking tan. Afterwards, she felt like she was still a little pale. So she lathered herself up with deep tanning lotion and visited every tanning salon in her town. Uh, now, how many tanning salons would that be? She visits every tanning salon in town. I mean, how many would that be? Like two or three, maybe? Yeah. So she went to two two or three tanning salons. She went to Ted's Sunshine Salon, which is just, just next to um, the bakery, and then she popped in at... Um, Lucinda's um, Orange uh, Jaffa Emporium. Oh, I know Lu- Lucinda. Yeah, Lucinda's Orange Jaffa. Yeah, the Jaffa Emporium. Emporium that it's um, it's quite a popular. It's, off- it's opposite that um, that fried chicken place, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's called uh, Crunchy Fried um, Wings. Crunchy Fried Crunch- Wings, I think. <laughs> Crunchy Fried Rings. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, wings. It's a, it's wings, a good. Not rings. It's a, they only they only ever sell wings there. No other part. Of yeah, anything. they do a good business on wings. The the other people like uh, wings. People like wings. Well, what can I say? I don't like wings, actually. Um, <laughs> no, so she I'm pops in at Lucinda's, man. Lucinda's Wink. the Jaffa Emporium, and and yes. she popped in at the um, the other one as well. Okay, so she's been to these other. Yeah, yeah she's been to two tanning other... salons. Yeah, because okay. that's all there are in any town, right? <clears throat> the next yep. day, right after the couple said, I do, the bride fell over dead. Well, I mean, hang on, hang on, hang on. So, I mean, I don't think that's excessive. Do you go to two no. tanning salons? I think that's fine. No. I think that's perfectly fine. I mean, maybe maybe if the first one didn't give you enough of a, a tan, you know, you, you, needed a, you need a good tan. You need a good orange all over. You know. It's a good look. Maybe the first one. The orange enough, you know, just skin. Miss, miss, good miss look. A few spots. Look, look, good luck. You can always good have look. a. You know, you can always have two. There's no problem with that. There's no problem. No, there no, at no, all no with that's that. fine. So carry on. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So she's oh, she, so she's had her wedding and she's dropped down there. Oh dear. That's <laughs> bad news. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. What happened? She's dead. She just died. Oh, oh dear. Oh, oh dear. Oh dear. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> What happened? Oh. Did they ever find out what happened? Apparently, oh dear. the autopsy reported that her organs had been cooked. Oh dear. <laughs> what? <laughs> <Cooked>. what? <laughs> <laughs> what? Did she accidentally go into crunchy fried wings and ate her tan? Because that might have been the problem. I think I've identified the problem. She, she went to go to Lucinda's, but, but she went in the wrong one. She went in the deep fryer. And she didn't notice <laughs> until until the wedding day. All of her organs are covered in the secret recipe. Delicious of crunchy batter. fried wings. Delicious. Yes. Their secret it's the, recipe. The general's, oh, the general's secret recipe, I think it's known as. He's a general. The general. <laughs> yeah, yeah, general yeah, yeah, yeah. crunchy fry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, quite, it's quite a popular brand in England. I don't know whether you've heard of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of our American listeners might not be familiar with uh, General Country Fry. The general. <laughs> oh, he's a good. He's a good man. His face is all over the place. Oh God. 
Oh dear. So yeah, her organs have been cooked. Um, <laughs> you must have heard that urban legend before. It's so bad. So bad. I've not heard that one before, but that is utterly ridiculous, isn't it? Mm. It's, um... Yeah. It's one of those things, it's like a story that you can... Her organs got cooked. Her organs got cooked! <laughs> what do you mean her organs got cooked? <laughs> so the outside... She only had like a spray on tan. Her outside's she, fine. She did go to microwave. She's got a lovely tan. <laughs> but the inside <laughs> is just all cooked. And she was fine. It's like oh, she was fine for like well I don't know twelve hours or something, you know, and then suddenly she just thought it was a little bit of pre-wedding nerves. That's all, you know. I think you know she was feeling a bit of butterflies <laughs> in her in her stomach. Little did she know that she was actually all crunchy and crispy inside. <laughs> the bu- the butterflies little are like you know. landing on her liver and nibbling at the li- the delicious crunchy fry coating. Mm. Oh my <laughs> gosh, goodness me. Well, that's a good one. <laughs> It's awful, isn't it? Awful. Oh God, you must have you you must have heard of this one, right? A young couple had to resort to a new babysitter one night because their regular sitter was ill. The girl okay, came highly common, recommended. Common thing. Yep, yeah, common I mean, there's thing. nothing odd about that so far. Happens all so, the time. So far. The girl came highly recommended, but the couple were a little put off when she arrived and they discovered she was a hippie. (laughs) Dun dun dun! Lightning sound um... effect, uh, thunder sound effect goes here. (coughs) She was a hippie. So how, um, how, who who recommended her, do you think? Was it just, you know, the neighbours or the other babysitter? Yeah. Okay, right, so. I mean, that's... So the agency... The well, that's how you that's how they get babysitters from, because, they you know, involved, they check, yeah. don't they? They do background checks and things. Yeah, of course, of course, of course. These babysitters have been very heavily vetted. So yes, yes. Okay, so they discovered she was a hippie, but being a young and open-minded couple, they decided to go ahead on their trip to the theatre, that they would call and check on the baby and the sitter during the intermission. Good idea. Good idea. Okay. I mean, that's that's what pretty reasonable. Hold on, what hold on. Anybody would do. What do you mean? They're, they're going to the theatre. How far away is this theatre? It's, it's like right um, next door. Well, it's not next door, is it? It's they, They'll phone. They won't, you know, call around. Oh, right, right. They're not going to go, they'll, they'll they're not gonna go back home. They're going to phone. Okay. During the intermission. That's yeah, fine. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. That's a very nice thing to do. Very thoughtful. It a lot is. of people wouldn't do that. A lot of parents wouldn't do well, that. Well, I think many would, because they want to check. I don't think many would. Yeah. I don't think many would. The intermission, they have well, a bit they of don't know. They don't want to... Well, you know, they're worried. They're nervous. Oh, oh, well, I mean, I can okay, give them that. Okay. How old is this baby, by the way? Um, It's a little baby. It's like, um, I don't know, a month or two. It's a bit oh, ridiculous so a that they're going baby, out yeah. and they're leaving such a young child at home. But I don't know. think they would do that, would they? It it's a young? really good play at the theatre, you know. It's something really. What is it? It's Hamlet with ju- with um oh. with David Tennant and um oh gosh Patrick Stewart. Oh well, I would I wouldn't miss that for for anything. No, so I can totally think no that. no okay. Okay. But they couldn't get the normal baby. So they've that, gone to see. Okay. They couldn't have scheduled it for another time. No. 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 no, no, no. no Only no. tonight. So okay. during the intermission, they call. And, they, and there's no one they could have left the baby with. No. There's no no family. There's no one like that. No, they're all. All of their family is all off on doing holiday. Their own thing. They're all on holiday. Um, everyone is on holiday. It's the summer holidays. Um, so they phone the, the babysitter during the intermission, who tells okay. the mother that everything was groovy and that she felt a bit hungry, so she stuffed and roasted the turkey for a nice dinner. Okay, so, I mean, she couldn't have accidentally... She couldn't have accidentally stuffed and roasted the baby. <laughs> no, I guess. I mean, that wouldn't not. happen, would it? I mean, that <laughs> wouldn't happen. Of course that wouldn't happen. I, I, I don't think that could happen. That mistake, I mean, that never even crossed her mind, probably. 
I mean, they don't really um, look alike. Do I mean, they, they? Did a they, turkey and a baby. They're quite did they have things. Did they possibly have a turkey in the fridge? Um, you know, when they left, is that something that the mother would have left in the fridge a whole turkey? No. In fact, and I mean, oh, in fact, the mother was a bit surprised because she she says to her husband, "I didn't think that we had a turkey in the in the refrigerator." Oh gosh. Well, maybe they have one in the freezer. Maybe That's weird, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah, that that'll be it. <laughs> Yeah, although Easy although uh, although a frozen turkey would take a long time to roast, and I, and I very much doubt she would have managed to heat up the oven. It takes about twenty minutes to heat up the oven. Even just an, you know, an unfrozen the turkey, one. Put, put the turkey in the oven. An unfrozen one would still take. A Even couple an unfrozen of hours, turkey takes least. a couple of hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Strikes me as a bit odd that that that's, bit, that's maybe maybe it's a bit she, odd, she, is it? It's one of these. It's a bit quick, odd. Maybe it was one of these quick quick cook turkeys or something like that. Maybe she I microwaved know, maybe, it. I'm just guessing. No, no, just it guessing. does say roasted. It says roasted stuffed. Oh, well, sometimes you can get these microwaves that have a sort of a roast. She stuffed it, Lewis. She stuffed, the, you know, the turkey. No, what did, she, what did she stuff the turkey she with? Did, did the mother ask that? No, probably I don't know, a bit of sage and onion, maybe a bit of parsley or apple or something. Okay. Okay. Breadcrumbs, you know, usual. Okay. And she's eating it, did you say? She's, she's eating. So the hippie's eating. Yeah, she's eating turkey. the, you know, the turkey. Um, the whole turkey. Well, some of it. She's eating some of the turkey, I imagine. I find turkey a bit dry. I find it difficult let's, to eat. Should we read on? Quite a lot. Go, go on, go on then. Go on. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's let's <laughs> read on. Let's see. Let's see what happens, shall we? When the parents got home, they were shocked to find the babysitter lying on the floor staring blankly into space tripped out on acid or something of course right so the parents naturally they they panic and they start looking all over the house for the baby but it's nowhere to be found oh gosh well, that's a bit weird isn't it yeah that's very strange what's yeah. happened to maybe it maybe someone snatched it I, don't know. I think that's the logical conclusion um to come to in that situation so of course they they call the police yeah. and they say yep. Our little baby has been been stolen. Um, our incompetent babysitter's here. She um, she's eating a turkey that we don't have. Um, well, they wouldn't say it to the police. They would they would say it to the police, would they? they actually, wouldn't I say feel it a bit hungry. Police. Could you? Can I just put you on hold for a minute? What do you mean? They say. What do you mean? They just say. Can I just put that. you on hold? I'm a bit I'm a bit hungry. But they're not hungry. Mind. Their baby's missing. But they're they can smell. The last thing they are. They're not they hungry. They can smell the roast turkey. Of course, they're not hungry. They can smell the roast it, turkey from the, the kitchen. Well, well are you sure it's except, the... except it smells a bit odd. It smells a bit funny. It smells a bit funny. Mm. It's like, mm. well, that smells nice, but I'm pretty sure turkey doesn't quite smell like smell like that. Um, and so you know they they potter into the kitchen, and they see a little mm-hmm. package yep. wrapped in foil. They unwrap it, and inside. Is the baby oh roasted and partially eaten, That's filled terrifying. with stuffing? That's terrible! Oh dear! Da. It's a true story. That, true, that happened. Jokes cast. Jokes cast. Horror stories. Jokes cast. Halloween special. You're listening to the horror pod. Jokes cast. Horror pod. Horror pod. Horror. Pod. When is October? It's um. Oh, it's in October. Ages. Isn't it? We might have to release this sooner. August, September. It's three months. It's three months away. I guess that's not that long away, is it? Really. We might have to release this sooner. Just a, a, an early Halloween. Early Halloween released in August. Hor- yeah, I can see that. That's brilliant. Brilliant. So when are we going to have the Christmas one? In fucking September? Well, we've never been particularly accurate on the old dates and shit, have we? Let's record the Christmas one now. Whilst we're at it. Get it all out of the way. And then we can take the rest of the year off. <laughs> ho, ho, ho! Welcome to the Yogpod Christmas Special! Ho, ho, ho! My sack is bulging with gifts for my delightful Yogg Ho, ho, ho! 
a bit of a belly pat, Lewis. Can you, can you give me a bit of a belly pat, please? No. On, um, on this month's show, we are... We're going to talk about Christmassy things. Fuck if you're hell, lucky, Lewis. If you're lucky, Simon, you might get a belly pad for Christmas. Under the mistletoe. If you know what I mean. <laughs> 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 I went from a fake laugh <laughs> to a real one. <laughs> that was so weird. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Ugh. That's something the listeners have got to look forward so, to. So, am I going to have to find a site with lots of Christmassy stuff? No, we're not going to do the Christmas one, for God's sake. Do the Christmas one when it's Christmas. It's, it's <laughs> July. We totally should. It's July. It's hot outside. <laughs> I'm a bit sweaty. It is quite hot today, isn't it? Tonight, even. You have been listening to the Halloween special in August. Um, of the old pod. Thank you for listening, and um, don't have nightmares. <laughs>